You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast. And right now we're going to look at what the CBN acting governor said. He says that diversion of diaspora remittances is the reason for Naira crash. Okay, so it is the woman you gave to me. It is the, the snake that you, you created. Is this what is happening right now? Okay, we have here to discuss this with us, Mr. Nick Agule, a uh, public affairs analyst. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Agule. Good morning and good morning to Nigerians. Okay. We also have Mr. Joe Femi Daguro, uh, also a public affairs analyst, joining us. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Okay, good. Uh, let me start with uh, Nick Agule. I just asked the question whether it is what happened in the Garden of Eden when it happened that uh, um, someone ate an apple or someone ate a fruit and everybody, nobody wanted to take the blame. It is the woman you gave to me. It is the snake. Everybody was, was blaming somebody else. Is that what is happening right now? Because uh, the CBN governor is saying that it is the diversion of diaspora remittances that is causing the Naira to crash. Do you believe that? Yeah, it was basically... Uh, and let me start with Nick, Nick Agule, please. And then we'll come to you, Joe. I, I, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that. Why uh, so? Even if... Uh, the diversion of diaspora remittances. I don't even understand what it means by diversion. Diversion from where to where? Even if that was the case, it is a minimal reason for the Naira crash. The people in government must understand the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are that the Naira against the dollar is a matter of who is demanding who. So as we speak today in Nigeria, the Naira is demanding the dollar more than the dollar is demanding the Naira. And for so long as the Naira is demanding the dollar more than the dollar is demanding the Naira, the Naira will continue to lose strength against the dollar. And the only way we can reverse this trend, there are two ways we can reverse this trend, two ways. Number one, we need to reduce our uh, imports, cut down on our imports. Number two, increase our exports. These are the Factors that are going to lead to the Naira gaining strength against the dollar. For so long as we continue to import, we are going to be looking for the dollar to buy. And if we are looking for the dollar to buy, a simple loss of demand says, the higher the demand for a product, the higher the price. It's a reality of life. The other way, as I said, is increase our exports. If we increase our export, then dollar inflow into the country will be more. And we, we talk about uh, diaspora remittances in the neighborhood of, there are various figures out there. Anything from 20000 $20 billion to, to $30 billion. But if we were exporting, we can make multiples of that, multiples. And culture alone has capacity to bring a trillion dollars into Nigeria if we really tap our agriculture properly. So I don't think uh, we, we need to blame diaspora uh, remittances. I don't think we need to blame this on anything. We just need to deal with the fundamentals and the currency exchange rate we correct. Okay, uh, let me come to you, Joe. Do you also uh, share in those thoughts or what are your own thoughts about uh, the comment of the acting CBN governor? Well, I think that was just uh, a stopgap excuse uh, for trying to find a balance and to be sure of uh, uh, the ways to handle what is, in, what is happening right now. 
And I think uh, if we look at it, uh, such statements, uh, most people have really condemned it. Uh, and uh, they will still condemn it. But right now, I think the central bank governor will be more comfortable now that uh, NMPC Limited has been able to secure a $3 billion loan from Afrizim, Afrexim Bank. Because, you see, after that, he said they were going to flood the market with dollars and uh, speculators should be warned. So that's why I'm saying maybe that was just a stopgap kind of excuse uh, while waiting for the, uh, for the loan to be secured. So w whatever we say right now, which, I mean, I quite agree with the fact that that was just no excuse at all. I mean, no one should make that excuse. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this problem of dollar naira has been in existence for ages and it will still continue to come up if it is not properly managed. You see, my concern is even when we have this loan now, the dollars, who are the people to manage it? Who are the people to use it? And whether we, the diaspora sends in 50 billion tomorrow morning, who are the people to benefit from it? Is it the manufacturer? Is it the students? Is it those who we go on uh, medical tourism? Who are the people? We have to find out the root cause of where this money goes. Apparently, if you are buying dollar, you have to fill a form. And this form should be collated. How much has company ABC uh, purchased or individual? So it's not a, a big deal for us to trace who is buying this dollar if we are transparent with it. So unless there's no transparency and if there's corruption going on somewhere in the banks or in any channel, in any of these channels, let's find out there is a problem. So it is not about excuse who is diverting what. The diversion is here in Nigeria. The diversion has nothing to do with the diaspora guys. You know, we in the diaspora, we know that we work hard. We want to assist our people at home. We want to assist this country, passionate about Nigeria. But when the money comes to Nigeria, who diverts it? So that is what the central bank should even be talking about, that we have found a source where this money is going. We have arrested some people. We are prosecuting some people. Yes, let there be transparency. The same thing, like I said, this $3 billion that has been secured, who is going to manage it? How is it going to be managed? If you flood the market now with these dollars, is it going to help to reduce the tension in the market? Is it going to help to, you know, I mean, the rate, the problems people are facing so because naira is weak and we all know that right now so how is this going to be managed let the central bank come out and tell us that look it's not the economy that is stupid it's not the politics that is stupid something stupid is going on and we are arresting it we are prosecuting them we are taking decisions people are fed up of excuses so no matter what the excuse you are given even the loan that has been taken now people want to know why did you get this loan how long is it going to take you to pay this loan because this loan uh, might sound or look so good to have right now as an emergency uh, loan that we needed right now. Yes, we need this money, but who and who will manage it and transparency about this management? The government of President Bola Meshulumbu should look into this carefully so that there will be trust in the market. There is fear right now in the market. There is anxiety. And this will continue to bring down the, the Naira. Because if you now think tomorrow Naira might go to X amount, look at the petroleum issue that we're talking about. It is based on the Naira. And once you have this Naira dollar issue, a lot of things will be affected. And it will affect the psychology of our people. It will affect the morale of our people. People are already dying. People are already crying. And this is what the central bank should be looking into and not the avenue of blaming people who are doing something. After all, he has the... the, 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 the opportunities he has the people to manage to monitor so what is the monitoring unit of the central bank doing what are the bankers doing the managing directors and the boards of the banks they should come out clean because all fingers have been pointed to the bankers and so we have not had anything from the bankers either saying yes it is happening or it's not happening so something is going on somewhere the silence from the bankers is causing a lot of confusion as well. Because when you say you go to a bank and they call one Aboki to come and exchange your dollar for you, has any bank spokesperson come out and deny that?
So if there is no denial somewhere, then we should know where this problem is coming from. If the outsider, the bank, uh, the bureau, the shown and some uh, and some of these people, they have regularly dollar is available regularly in the parallel market. Where is this dollar coming out from? Who is supplying the dollars? So if we know the source of how this thing comes into the market, we either block it and start to you know appeal to the minds of these people because sometimes it is not the legality that helps now. It is the dialogue that we help. And I think enough of excuses and let us find the fundamentals like the gentleman said. But then I think most of the things happening right now in Nigeria has defied the common knowledge of economics. And that is why we have to really look into the ways so that we don't mismanage this dollar, this loan that we have taken right now. And uh, at the end of the day, we still find ourselves in that situation where we, we are coming from. The situation is very, very critical at the moment. And we have to look into it carefully. It okay. is not just about the central bank uh, governor. It's about all of us in this country. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was a marathon one. Um, I've, I've, we've been joined by Bolahon Olajede, a public policy analyst as well. And uh, as I welcome you, good morning, uh, Bolahon, to the program. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Yeah, it's always a pleasure having you. But uh, let's, let's just kickstart this with... Uh, uh, the fact that we're talking about the excuse that the central bank governor, the acting central bank governor has given, that diversion of diaspora remittances is the cause of the Naira crash. And then there is this story on the headlines. Uh, if you check the Nation newspaper, for instance, you'll see NNPCL, three, uh, the $3 billion uh, uh, buffer to strengthen the Naira, stabilize exchange rate. And for us, the laymen will be asking, is that the responsibility of NNPCL to do whatever they want to do to stabilize the economy or the Naira or something? Uh, tell us how important this loan is, by the way, and why it had to be NNPCL that took it. Okay. Um the source of uh, about 90% of Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings is oil. Mm. We don't produce any other thing in a reasonable quantity to be able to earn foreign exchange. So oil is the thing. Uh, so we can easily link that up with why NMPC is coming into that space. Mm. Uh, what, what I had thought would have been uh, one of the, the low-hanging fruits for the administration, especially in the course of pursuing the collapse of the multiple exchange rate, is to say, look, since I know that 90% of my foreign exchange earnings come from oil, let me gas down on production and ensure that we can continue to rev up how much oil we're producing in the short term so that we can earn more, more forex. The problem with Nigeria's exchange rate is supply. The supply is poor. The supply is monosource. It is crude. Whatever happens to crude oil, either because the price of crude oil in the international market crashes, or because, as it has been in the last uh, so many months now, the production from Nigeria is what crashed, the price is good, um, we will suffer from foreign exchange issues. And once we don't have enough supply of the foreign exchange, there will be a pressure on the Naira. And we will continue to see the Naira uh, depreciating because we cannot defend it. We have no capacity to defend it. Or maybe we shouldn't even be defending it anyway because what we really need to do is well established. What we need to do in the medium term. And what we need to do is that we must earn more foreign exchange. So Nigeria must produce more goods and services that it can offer to the world so that the world will buy these goods and services and pay us in the foreign exchange. We are not doing that. And we have relied on crude. Whatever happens to crude will affect our fortune, either because we're not producing enough or because the price of crude crashes. That is a fundamental problem. Mm. So NMPC being able to raise three billion, uh, if it's able to raise it, is a, is good, but we must not miss the mark that is going to be in the short term. Mm. 
uh, uh, there are certain reports that said that even the obligation, the outstanding obligation on the on our official FX window, as at the date the multiple exchange rate was collapsed into one, was in the range of 10 billion to 12 billion US dollars. So if you even look at that alone and you have raised 3 billion, um, it still doesn't cut it. But if you put 3 billion in the market, it will help to stabilize the rate for a while. Maybe that will give us the opportunity to do a few other things to improve the supply of, of, of FX while that 3 billion lasts. But 3 billion, while it will, it will work temporarily, will not be a final solution to our foreign exchange problem. Mm. Okay, uh, final solution is what we want. Let me come back to Nika Gule. You also have listed some of the things that need to be done. Okay, at least you, in a blanket way, you just said that we needed to uh, sell more, we needed to export more, we needed to produce more. Um, in this short term, in this short term, what do you think that the country could have done uh, for our economy to be better, for our Naira to be stronger? Because we cannot build industries in one day and start selling the things that we need to sell that will give us foreign exchange and all that. What do you think could have been done in the short term? Uh, oh, thank you very much. Nick, oh. Nick Agule, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I totally align my views with uh, my co-panelist uh, who spoke last. Uh, the thing here is that uh, I, I don't want to say the central bank governor is ignorant because that would be a strong word to use for someone, someone occupying such a high office. Because like what my co-panelist said, the foreign exchange crisis is arising from a supply issue. So it is the lack of the dollars in the market that is making the exchange rate to crash against the Naira. But additionally, like I did say before, it is also arising from a demand issue. So Nigerians are demanding so much dollars to go and pay school fees, to pay medical, to import this or that. And then Nigerians are not exporting to get dollars in. So there's a supply issue, there's a demand issue. The diaspora remittances are actually helping with the exchange rate. Has the central bank governor thought about if there were zero remittances from the diaspora today, it is going to exacerbate the situation. It will, it will remove from the supply that is already in the market today. So I think he got, he got his views totally mixed up because the diaspora remittances are coming. And now that this government says the parallel market and the uh, so-called official market are at the same rate, Diasporans now have better incentive to put their dollars in the banking system. Because hitherto, if I was a diaspora and I put my money in the bank, my dollars in the bank, the bank will exchange it at 450. Whereas if I took it to a malam in the parallel market, the malam would have given me 750. So that was the attraction for diaspora to take their money, their dollars to the parallel market. But now the central bank has collapsed the rate. Both the bank and the malam are giving you almost the same thing. So the diasporas are now more to, uh, willing to put their dollars through the banking system. So the central bank governor should know that the diasporas are supplying dollars to the market. It doesn't matter which market, but they are meeting the demand of dollars by Nigerians. So how can that become a problem? You see? So for me, you, you ask me the question, what are the, the, the immediate steps that need to be taken by the government to, to bring stability to the exchange rate? One of the immediate problems is not the three billion that has been secured as a loan by the NMPC. You know, in Nigeria, there's a piece of news, and we all become euphoric about it. That three billion means nothing. In the quantum of demand of Nigerians needing uh, dollars, three billion, if you drop three billion in the market, it's just a drop in the ocean. Do you know that in, in Ukraine alone, we, we were told that we have 5,000 Nigerian students? If they have to pay their school fees, they will sweep uh, three billion off the market. But aside from that, the NMPC collected that loan on the backdrop of uh, the, the cruises that we, they will make in the future. You cannot just make cruises without spending money. I can assure you that for them to produce the crude, to sell and repay that loan, they need more than the three billion they collected. 
because crude oil is produced with money spent in dollars. You know, so at the end of the day, this news for me, I don't want to call it fake news, but it's just giving us some hype, making it look as if uh, there's something that is happening. There's nothing that is happening. For this government to correct the exchange rate problem, they need to understand that there are two causes of this problem. Cost number one, we're demanding too much dollars. Cost number two, there is so small dollars being supplied into the market. How would they deal with this? Is one, what are the causative factors that are causing us to demand so much dollars? They have to deal with those causative factors. And people are paying school fees. People are, are, are going on medical. People are importing their clothes, their cars, their machines. They, then what is the causative factor for the, for the less supply of dollars in the market? We are not producing enough. We are an economy of 3,000 megawatts of electricity. It cannot produce enough to export and get the money. So they, they just have to get down to, to business and do the work of correcting this. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Mm. Uh, Joe, do you have uh, some thoughts to add to what um, uh, Nick has just said? Well, a lot has been said uh, over time regarding uh, the problems. <laughs> we, we, it seems everybody, even if you go to Mount 12 or, or Oyingo or Jankara, wherever, or, or Shui, they will tell you the same problems we have in this country regarding uh, uh, foreign exchange issues. So you see, the problems are known, but the solutions are what we don't really have. You know, because if we are all saying that, okay, we have to export, yes, logically, but what do we have to export? How do we export what we don't have? You know, and it, it, we don't even have enough locally to feed ourselves. If you look at it from that point, and prices are rising every day, we don't have a living wage in Nigeria. The minimum wage is not even what we have, not to talk of a living wage. So we can't spend what we don't have. But it seems in the past we've spent a lot what we don't have. And same thing might happen to this money as loan taken. We will spend it and hoping that we will have more. We are spending before we even have. We are taking loan to spend before we even uh, generate whatever we will generate. So the problem we continue to roll into the future, and that is what is bad because, you know, the past uh, press, uh, the past governors of uh, Central Bank, they've attempted so many ideas. They've attempted to do so many things, but it is not the idea that is not there. It is the execution. The execution has to be well monitored. The execution has to be well, you know, prepared for and be, I mean, be distributed. Where are we distributing this money into? And I think the banking industry, we have to look into the banking industry. We have to look into this parallel. Who is running the parallel market, for goodness sake? They are Nigerians. So if we have to look into this, it is not just about the theory. Inflation is biting hard. This petrol issue, if you put this money to just uh, uh, bridge the gap of uh, the, the, the Naira and the uh, dollar petrol to bring the petrol in, it is, like, like uh, Nick said, it's a temporary thing. And how long will this be? Because the issue is this. The deregulation now in the market allows you to buy your dollar wherever and bring the petrol in and sell at your price. So will it be only the uh, NMPC stations that we have these assets? What about the, the private guys who are looking for money here and there to do their business? So the petrol price will still be an issue. And that is what is of concern to a lot of Nigerians. You see, only a few people will bring in champagne and be, you know, drinking and they tax them and all that. But the common things that the people will need, these are missing right now. And we don't have the enough in our local market to supply or to export to Ghana or to Cameroon is an issue right now so unless there is a you know a kind of african uh african kind of uh, uh economic from the bottom up where the african countries will begin to say let's begin to trade with ourselves like they have this after thing let's begin to trade with ourselves with our own currency just like uh, william ruto is trying to do or to promote so if we are still trading with ourselves remitting dollar and you know sending dollar here and there within african country it will not all go well and that is why european union they're having they're not they're having a, a field day enjoying this euro currency within themselves if we have that 
the blockchain of African money, African currency. It will reduce some of this tension we are having. But as long as all Africans are depending on dollar, we are going to continue to have this issue because we don't control the dollar. And those who are controlling the dollar, they have fun saying that you depend on their money. So this is an issue beyond Nigeria, beyond whatever amount of money we are putting in. We can't continue to say we want to flood the market with what does not belong to us. Dollar is not our own currency. So if we flood it today from whatever you have taken as a loan, what about if you have run short of it in another one or two months? Where are you going to take a loan again? You take another loan, and then we will have debts that we may not even be able to settle in the long run. So I think, and I believe, it is for all of us to begin to think well on how to do this. It is not just the central bank alone, like I said, but they are just mandated to come up with policies. And uh, the government has to reason along with so many other ideas. The production of goods to export from Nigeria, we cannot meet it. Just like Nick said and uh, uh, Bolahon said, we can't because we are not having enough to even to produce. We don't have enough electricity to produce. And don't, don't forget, electricity will jack up their price again. The discos are planning to jack up their prices, and then the petrol will go up, the diesel is going up. So where do we have the benefit? Where is the profit coming in? So it's a lot of problem, and that's why I'm saying, look, it is not something about the next few months or that everybody will just say, hooray, uh, we're going to start to relaxing and start rejoicing. No, we still have a lot to do, and it's going to take us some years. It's not just about a week or two or three. The system has collapsed for a long time, and that we have to understand. And these petroleum prices we continue to rise. There's no doubt about that. Even if we bring it down now for a while, in another few months it will rise again. So let's address the issue. Let's tell the people, let's tell the public the truth about what is going on. And let's not hide the truth. Unless we begin to tell the truth as it is, we will continue to run into the problems. And we should not double into ECOWAS issue uh, the way we are dabbling into it. Let's reform ourselves. Let's begin to have policies. What is our foreign policy uh, now? Do we have a foreign policy that will guide us into what all of these things we are dabbling into in Africa, in ECOWAS? We have to reform all these things apart from the currency as well. What is going to happen to all the roads that have not been completed? Ibadan, Lagos, Ibadan, Expressway. Who is going to pay for all these roads? We have not been talking about infrastructures. We are just talking about just one aspect. And this aspect is very crucial because even the, the, the raw materials to bring in, you begin to see that cement, the prices of cement are, are, are going up. The prices of everything is virtually going up. So we have a problem on our hands. And, you know, it is not the federal government alone. The state governments have to come into this. It is not just about taxing the people because late, sooner or later you begin to see taxes will continue to rise. Various ideas of taxes will come in, either from the local government, from the state government, or from the federal government. So a lot of reforms are going on right now. We do not know what will be the outcome of it. And that is the, the, the height of the whole thing. People are, are you know, they have this apprehension. And unless we begin to douse it gradually, the theory, the time for theory is gone. The time for theory is gone. Let's talk about the practical things that will make the people happy. It is not enough for us to just continue to talk about, oh, we have this, we need this. Yes, demand and supply. Simple economics 101. But then it's beyond that right now. The reality is we don't have the money okay. and we need to get the money. Where do we get the money from? And how do we manage the money? What we have, we are not managing it well. Okay. Look at our maritime. The maritime industry, are we managing it? We are getting money from the maritime industry. Nimasa is making money in dollars. Other areas are people are making money in dollars. The Port okay. Authority, they are making money in dollars. Right. So it is not just diaspora. Okay, we just learned this morning that, um, or maybe a few hours ago, that even the oil rig that collapsed on the high sea has been operating since 2016 illegally on our waterways. And that's what Nimasa said. I'm just saying because uh, you said we're not even exploiting uh, the potential in our waterways. Uh, okay, well, let me come to uh, Bolahon. This question may not be about a solution. Let me, just so that I don't forget, let me ask you this, Bolahon. Uh, I know we're talking about um, diaspora remittances. I know of a bank, particularly. I don't know of other ones, but a particular bank uh, that this uh, friend receives money from a relation uh, overseas. 
And as soon as the dollars come in, if it is $1,000, the bank takes the liberty of changing it into Naira immediately without even consulting the person who the Naira is, or the dollars are sent to. Maybe because they're trying to guard against him taking it to Aboki instead of changing it in the bank. Is this even legal? No. Um, I believe the uh, recipient um, should have the liberty as to whether he wants to receive the money in dollars or in Naira. As a matter of fact, the federal government at some point incentivized that, mm. incentivized yeah. people to be able to receive or to want to receive uh, their money in Naira. I have received foreign agents sent to me in Naira under that incentive, and I receive I receive some amount um, on top of it by virtue of the incentive. Mm. Uh, but when you do it, cutting out um, the consumer's uh, uh, um, opinion or, or how he wants to take his, uh, his, his, his money, uh, that might not exactly be illegal, except... Oh, this is such a bad time. To you see, be it okay. so there is any rule uh, like that in place. Okay, well, it's, it's uh, well, like you said, the person should have the opinion to say, okay, what if... And by the way, all these uh, uh, um, diaspora money, you see, the market is a very interesting place. It has a way of allocating resources by itself. If diaspora money is going into the unofficial market, it must be because there are market forces that are driving it into that place. Mm. If it is now a lot of money in that space, then supply should improve and the rate should actually come down. That is what you have. But that is not what we are seeing. So the, 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 the problem is not as simple as it has been presented. But it, it, the, 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 the problem itself has been defined for a long time. We know the solutions. When we are ready and we have the political will, we can go in and, and begin to attack. Okay, I'm interested in in those solutions, Gola uh, Hona. I remain with you, but first okay. of all, first before you give us the solutions, just give them together if it's possible. I'm trying to see everybody's jackpying. Uh, that's the new word in town that everybody's talking about. People are running away. Now that means there was a clip I was watching. One expatriate was asking a Nigerian. Uh, he was the MC or something. What is the meaning of jackpa? And he said. Jaqua is when we intentionally export the talents that we have in Nigeria. It was a very interesting definition he gave. But that struck me. That means we, have, we may not have companies that produce a lot of things that we, we export, but we have services that we are exporting. Professionals are living and they're doing good wherever they are going to. In fact, we've had cases of foreign trained doctors coming to Nigeria and not passing the exams that will make them doctors uh, that are qualified enough to practice in Nigeria. But our doctors, we've not heard um, any, any saying that uh, they have been sent back because they couldn't perform well, which means we have services to render. Members of us who can go out, they render these services and all that. Is there a possibility of monetizing these services for the good of Nigeria, not on personal levels now? Can Nigeria sell these services of people that we know that have this potential of, you know, doing well wherever they go to and get the money for us as a country and not just remit to relations within the country? Absolutely, yes. Um a lot of exportation of, um, of uh, our people, our talent outside now, um, is largely unstructured. The reality is that we can build structures around it. A very good example is in the medical space. In the medical space today, our people are living in droves. And the hospitals and, and, and the healthcare sector in Nigeria is suffering a mass from that exit, from that exodus. Mm -hmm. But the question is, uh, uh, um, it is very cheap to produce doctors and healthcare workers in Nigeria, unlike some other jurisdictions. So after we produce very cheap uh, 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 doctors, these doctors leave because we are not able to keep them by virtue of the work environment and the, and the uh, remuneration that we provide to them. So it's a loss to the country. So to fix that problem, the country must look at it in totality. There was a time that uh, there was a bill in the house. Uh, to delay them for five years. Those are 
lazy thinking kind of solution. They don't work anywhere. We must think deeper and say, if we're able actually to produce this caliber of um, services cheaper, we can train these people cheaper, can we build a structure around it to be able to export, produce a mass, export, and there will be benefits to the nation from what is going on. As it is today, is a, is a haphazard space. We have the same scenario with our IT professionals. They're all living in droves. They're going out there. Meanwhile, as a matter of fact, there are foreign countries coming into Nigeria to come and recruit our IT professionals. Can't we build a structure around it, ensure that there is an incentive for these people to be here, the one we want will be here, and the one we want to export, we can export it, and the more remittance, it will improve our remittance. These people earn a lot of money, and they earn it in foreign action, and it can come back to us. On part of the solution to our dollar problem, uh, one of it is in terms of crude. And why I'm always saying crude is that in the short term, all the other measures are difficult to implement in the short term. But for crude, here is what has happened to our crude production. In 2005, November, this same country produced an average of approximately 2.5 million barrels of oil per day. 2005, November. Fast forward to September 2022, our production was 931,000. That is about a third, about one third of what we were producing in 2005. For a country that the source of our foreign exchange is 90% oil, a quick getaway, uh, get out of jail card is to step down on that production now that the price is good. Let me tell you something that could really, really mess stuff up now. If something happened on the global space and the price of oil crashes today, we're going to be in such a mess that I, I, I don't know how we're going to be able to find out where. Which is why we should maximize the opportunity while it is there. The price is good right now. Can we gas down on production and make more money from oil? The other part is on the refined product itself. The refined product is a consumer of our mega foreign exchange. And that takes us back to the issue of refineries. If we, we gas down on those refinery contracts, bring them, to, bring them to production as fast as possible, including even the private refinery, we will begin to save a lot of money from importing refined products. It is an absurdity that the raw materials are here, refineries are here, but we are using the hard end foreign exchange to import refined products into this country. That will help a great deal. Of course, we can look into things we can do for food security. We are so blessed a country. I like the, the last speech from the president. It is fantastic. And I hope it can implement. That will solve a whole lot of problems in the, on the inside. When people are able to feed, they bother less about so many other things. We have the land, we have the water, we can feed not just Nigeria, we can feed Africa if we set our mind to feed in Africa. That is the reality of it. Mm. Okay, let me, let me come back to Nick for a summary um, because we're just rounding off this, uh, this segment and this show as well. So uh, individually, as fast as possible, let me begin with you, Nick. Let me just get a summary from you. We've all been, we've been promised that by December there's a possibility that they, uh, they didn't even use the word possibility. The president said that the refineries will begin to work. At least that is what promise that he gave to labor when they were about to go on strike. They said that the refineries will be working in December, uh, that alongside the fact that he's, because he wants to cut costs, he's now living in a two-bedroom flat. Okay, well, maybe that's just for fun uh, that he said that. But the refineries are what we are really concerned about. He said they are going to be working in December. Um, we remember also that the Dangote refinery was launched uh, by the previous administration, and it was supposed to start production by June. Now they have been given, Dangote has been given the license to even import uh, fuel into the country, and <laughs> we're just looking what is going on here, and some people are even saying that that refinery might work in 2000, uh, 2024, 
or 2026 even, uh, nobody knows. Whenever it starts to work, we'll see it. But now, you know, we're just there hanging. Let me just take your summary, like I said. I was just talking and talking and talking. Let's get your summary as we wrap up this show. From you, I'll go to Joe and then to Bolaho. Nick, please. Thank you very much. I think the problem of the Dangote refinery is that uh, they have achieved probably a Guinness uh, Book of Records uh, entry that they are the world's largest single train refinery. But that is causing them a lot of problems. Because as a single train refinery, any component of that refinery that is not working, the entire refinery is going to be down. <clears throat> if they had asked me, I would have said they should build a three train refinery of 200,000 barrels uh, each, so that if one train is done, it will be producing while they are fixing the other trains. But uh, it's what under the bridge. I wish them luck in terms of uh, getting it done. Then on the Nigeria's own four refineries, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the news that they will work in December, I don't want to call it fake news, but this news is not backed up with data. We know that the refineries are down. So if they are to work in December, what's the contracts that have been awarded to refurbish them? We didn't hear anything about that. Uh, so for me, the solution to these four refineries, government-owned refineries in Nigeria, is that President Tinubu should either set them out outrightly or he should lease them out so that uh, private uh, investors will come in and take these refineries and work. Let me give you one piece of news that you may not be aware. Uh, the best road in Nigeria today is the Kefi to Makudi Road. It's a dual carriage road, totally finished, uh, very, very well done, painted and all of that. And who made that road? Is the Chinese. They gave a loan to Nigeria, but they didn't put that money in the Ministry of Works. They brought the money and did the road by themselves. I can bet you that if that money was put into the Ministry of Works, we will still be hearing that that road will be completed in 2025, 2026, 2027. We are in a, in a, in a, in a state of private sector-led economies now. And any government that is still talking about doing refineries, doing roads, doing water, doing electricity is way behind the times. And President Tinubu has to understand that. We need a private sector-led economy. That's my last word for him. Okay. Uh, it's unfortunate we cannot take the comments from our other two guests because the time is up already. The news is coming up uh, in a short while. But I'd like to thank you all for being a part of the show. Nika Gule, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Bolahon Olojede, public policy analyst, uh, thank you so much. And uh, Jofemi Dagunro, also a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for being a part of the show this morning. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Yes, we were talking about the comment of the Central Bank of Nigeria acting governor, and here is where we are going to wrap up the show this morning. But let's leave you with a quote of the day. If you don't build your dream, someone else will hire you to help them build theirs. That is according to Dirubai Ambani. So build your dreams today, whatever they are, no matter how big they are, and you just might get there. My name is Nyam Gul. I'm Gaijin.